All right. So what had happened last was a series of events. We are still on our mission, traveling to find the place where the, if I recall correctly, Impress was being kept captive. We had been traveling for, I believe, but a few days until we had arrived to a sort of midpoint where we are to reconvene and meet um, Aaron, if I remember correctly, and his group. They were, frankly, rather nice, companionable. I had not met them before, but the rest seemed to have treated them all as good friends. Aaron, in specific, who happened to be a demigod like the likes of Ragnar and Everin. Aeson. Oh, Aeson. Thank you. That's no problem. I got you, Grinson. <laughs> but, um... But yes. And so, we decided to take a bit of a moment of reprieve since we had just gotten there and decided to rest our feet. I had never tried alcohol personally, and Davia in particular seemed to had wanted me to try it for the first time, claiming that it would be an enjoyable experience. I am not entirely sure if I can call the experience enjoyable, but it was an experience nonetheless. I never understood quite why people would poison their bodies for the sake of seeming recreation, escape, others, but I suppose for the general stupor that there was, even though I did not remember much of it at all, um, it was, for the lack of a better term, entertaining, per se, at least for the others. Although, with later what had happened is... um. With some choice words that I had heard, um, I began to experience a bit of a moment um, of panic. I needed to clear my head and therefore tried to step away from the others for the meantime. Uh, before I knew it, I had accidentally stayed an entire out night out in the rain. Luckily, I had noticed before I had begun to freeze. So I had headed back in afterwards, still a bit distraught. After everything that had happened, and after realizing some very, very important things about my mission, I had attempted to steal myself and become once again an impartial sentinel following the party, with nothing but his demands and wishes being carried through, no longer caring about emotion, but... Everin had stopped me. I did not know what it was exactly of what she had said, but it had broken me down a bit. And while I'm not yet entirely sure about whether or not I, this, them, is a good decision, I suppose only time can tell. For the meantime, I suppose I can enjoy this temporariness. Other than that, after reconvening with the party, um, varying responses due to my rearrival, um, we had begun to talk about the mission, and Asen had, I believe, decided to join us on our little journey heading on forward. Um, hopefully, though, um, no, they did give me a rest, so I could heal off from the piece of my soul that I had given to Davia. And I think that's just about it. Okay. All right. So, yeah, more or less. Um, that uh, sounds about right. Now, you guys were about to send Halani on a stealth mission. 
Yeah, screens. but first we were going to go ahead. So Halani wasn't too like we were go going together to the forest about half an hour out to an hour out, just basically so we tell we don't need to make stealth checks and then send Halani ahead. With the invisibility <laughs> spell. Yeah, because Cinder was able to. That's why we were going to go right up, right behind you, up to like a half hour outside the t outside or twenty minutes or however close we can get. Okay, um, you guys are able to make it about 20-ish minutes away from where the primary uh, Thursian encampment is. As you guys head down the road, what, what time of day is this? Yes, this is the morning. Um, the forest here isn't as thick as it was. Uh, it's really thinned out from where you guys had traveled from. But it's still pretty, pretty well uh, dense up here. Um, but you're able to make out just some small wisps of smoke up on the uh, kind of the skyline from the encampments. The uh, the the forest itself has a lot of underbrush and such, so it shouldn't be too difficult for you guys to find a spot to really hide if you so need to. Um, otherwise, what would you like to do? Yeah, well, I guess since we're outside the, uh, the area with the party, do you be able to look at it? goes, I uh, think we are close enough here. Uh, Elani, are you ready to uh, move on ahead? Nervously, she nods. Do not fear. You've done this before, at least in smaller bouts. This should be no different. The moment you feel threatened, do not be afraid to come back to us. Oh, and of course, watch out for any traps. Uh, Hello? <laughs> uh, so, Evan, yes. You're muted, by the way. <laughs> I know. Okay, just making sure. Um, I guess I will cast the invisibility spell. Uh, you see her walk up to you, and she kind of, um, just kind of holds her arm, uh, her hand out towards you, just like splayed open, and there's like this kind of like bright light that uh, flashes for a moment and suddenly your form starts to shimmer and slowly just fades into well you appear invisible <laughs> it's shifting <laughs> your family has shifted you're invisible <laughs> um, if I may he kind of like puts a hand to his um Yeah, yeah, actually. He'll kind of put a hand to his chin for a moment before uh kind of looking over towards her is just mm. From what I understand from all of you, as long as she is only to um surveil is there any chance that she might encounter a combat situation? Uh, hopefully not, but uh, I suppose it is always possible. Well, hmm, one moment. He will say one and... thing. No. Oh. oh no! Go ahead. Just, just to remind you, like, uh, do not forget, Helani. Though, if you are in a combat situation, I would suggest fleeing. Uh, as long as you do not attack, the spell should last. Uh, correct, Cinder. Indeed. And well, I'm. I wonder, um, Helani, do you have any means of self-healing? I have a couple of potions on me. 
Well, all right. If that is the case, I was wondering if perhaps I could bestow upon you a usage of a spell, but... <clears throat> he kind of, like, actually thinks a little bit more. It's just... <clears throat> For the meantime, no, no. And he will kind of, um, kind of touch her shoulder and um, kind of take off his mask for a moment to kind of reveal a decently uh, bright smile. And he's just, I am sure that you will be able to perform this swimmingly. Just please make sure to be careful. Always. Everyone waddles over and just holds out a figurine of a goat. Oh yeah, I forgot that I was fucking using the thing. <laughs> this is the goat. His name is Llama. Be really nice to him. He'll help you when he can, okay? And she takes it. Thank you. Bring him back, okay? I had this weird image of her Halana getting in trouble just yeets the statue at someone and keeps running. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else doing anything? Uh, Jube will probably walk up and just say, I'll try to keep eyes up on you from above as long as I can. If you look like you are in danger, we will know ahead. And he'll send Shatori Toga up to scout up and basically if, if he sees you being chased down, he'll know. I eyes upon me while I'm invisible. Uh, this is more for the sake that if you are fleeing back, chances are they are being you are no longer invisible. <laughs> that actually is rather true. Actually, yeah, I can do that. So what he'll do. What Quentin will do is that he will walk over um, to Helani and um, taking a little bit of the uh, the graveyard dirt from his pouch, he will kind of begin to roll it into a bit of a small um, ball until out of kind of nowhere, it begins to slowly burst and fume with this blackish bluish smoke. And he will go ahead and slightly press it kind of um, to her chest before it will actually uh, enter. And stepping back a little bit, he'll just say, um, could you do me a quick favor? Perhaps. Um, put your hand on your chest, please. Uh, yeah. Okay. And and for the sake of this, he's not going to uh, say it, but it's a it's a short phrase in a different language. Um, and basically, uh, upon doing such, if you do, do you choose to? Yes. Upon doing so, this blackish bluish flare begins to emanate back from within you and you feel just this sheen of cold spread throughout your body before ever so slightly just hardening a bit and um, thanks to the the beauty of um, god I fucking love this spell so goddamn much um, using the investiture of um, of ceremony, you are going to gain one false life spell, essentially. The uh, temporary hit points for its duration. It's a small boon, but I really wanted to use it, so... so what did you you use it? ceremony? Yeah. What ceremony did you use? Investiture. Okay. You that's one willing humanoid. Choose one first level spell you have prepared and expend a spell slot and any material components as your casting spell. Uh, the spell has no effect. Instead, the target can cast the spell once without having to expend a spell slot or use material components. 
got to do it within the hour, but I mean, since it's an hour spell and you're not going to be probably gone for that long, might as well use it now. It's just if I do it, invisibility drops. Yeah, it is true. Ah. <laughs> she... uh, speaking of which... I mean, can you, could you do it before but... invisibility? Well, I mean, I'm already, I'm already invisible. Retcon! <laughs> <laughs> Well, otherwise, then I suppose... I'd say you got away with doing this before invisibility got cast. Yeah. yeah. Roll your 1d4 plus 4 temporary hit points there, Alani. No! <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Watch, that 5 is going to come in clutch. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope not. I hope it doesn't go that bad. <laughs> yeah, actually, let's hope that it's completely useless. Um... <laughs> Pardon me, while this whole thing was going on, I was like, I was like, technically I'm invisible, I could just be like, just not respond, and like, if he's like, go reach out, touch me, I was like, yeah, you can't find me, and just say that Halani <laughs> fucked off already. <laughs> that would have been great. Halani fucked, Halani fucked off the second she went invisible, the whole party's just been talking <laughs> to the thin air. You know what, that would have <laughs> been a very efficient means of evading this, but Yeah. <laughs> For the meantime, you will be slightly a bit more durable than you normally would. But still, do be careful. It is but a shell of a facsimile of necrotic life. Well, if that is all, I should get going before this spell loses all of its time. Be safe. Again. You are right. And yes, whatever in said, be safe. I leave. Okay. And with that, we get to go to the GM spot. Fuck. Oh, Watch. my guys. Watch out <laughs> for <laughs> the, the things. <laughs> My five will protect Don't get seduced. Do not get seduced. <laughs> we can RP up here? Okay. <laughs> yeah, you can RP up. Hey, well, I'm recording it, so it makes sense. <laughs> yep, you guys RP up here, and I will deal with it. Alright, this sounds fun. I hey guys, what's happening at the castle? Fuck, no! <laughs> we're not doing that! Wait, wait, but, we're um... doing that? Oh, no. no, we're not. No, we're not. We are not. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I should mention, though, I really love Ceremony. When I found out that that could happen, I'm just like, wow, I could technically turn anyone into a healer. <laughs> For a short bit of time, yes, but even then. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's don't, great. Don't do it to Davi, she'll only use it on herself. I mean, frankly, that's also a good use. <laughs> <laughs> I can essentially how much Davi it goes down. Technically, if I gave you your, like, if I gave you your own healing word, you essentially just have, a, like, a a weaker, yes, but, like, your own version of Second Wind. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Meanwhile, I have a pair. Uh, yeah, fuck you and your fucking, fucking, fuck- Ah! Three! <laughs> Magic initiate. Magic initiate, yeah, exactly. A spell I- Hey, man, like I said, it's a, it's a skill I took, so Davia wouldn't die. <laughs> Dab. <laughs> you know, ha I, had never even crossed my mind to take it, so I'm like, I could really use healing word in this party. <laughs> Lord, so now with all my items, it's hard to make her go down now. Oh yeah, definitely. Now, now, now he's targeting me because of you. <laughs> How's it feel? Oh, at least I survived more than she does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nikki. No, uh, I'm, saying, yet... no, I'm saying no. I'm saying because you're in the background. Yeah. Oh yeah. Isn't that where I'm supposed to be? Because I'm a magic caster <laughs> and I'm a sorcerer. Yeah. And so it's harder to get you. Of course. And plus, I'm just, I'm just Everin. So Everin's already just an, an annoying little shit to deal with. <laughs> she's yeah. she's like she's Meanwhile... like a little kid that like attaches herself yeah. to your through your leg, and it's like, you can't get her off. What do you mean? You've literally done that before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Nano ignores Jubei at every chance he can get right now, because he just... 
I'm just waiting for that CR20 dragon to pop up so you can start fucking Jubei up. <laughs> I mean, all he needs to do is have multiple enemies just surround him. He does, he does. The only problem with that, though, is that if multiple enemies surround him, then we all get to fuck them up. Yeah, I but, mean, that's... Like, I'm saying, though, if he has, like, a lot of enemies. Yeah, that is that is where a fireball comes in handy with Jubei. He's fine with being yeah. fireballed. Or a I've lightning got... bolt. I, I can either absorb the element and taking half the damage, or I could succeed my throw and take no damage, so I'm okay yeah, with that. He, I feel like even if he wasn't fine with it, Cinder would just go for it. Honestly, <laughs> Heath, you're the one who taught me the uses of absorb elements. I never thought it was good until I saw what you were doing. But I realize it's kind of exclusively kind of a gish thing, but even that. Like, like, it's it, still fucking useful. It, it can be damn useful, especially if you're a frontliner like Jubei, who's always, whose goal is to be the guy who's supposed to be attacked. Like, I'm the aggro. Mm -hmm. Like, perfect scenario would be everybody behind Jubei by like 150 feet shooting spells while Jubei's up front attacking. <laughs> yeah. Because like I said, he's still got to get my, right at the current time, 28 AC to hit me. Fuck. <laughs> exactly. But that's why he's going to try to destroy me with spells in the future, which is why I got well, get... <laughs> which is why I got gonna resistance. He's going to try hard. <laughs> he's going to have to try hard though because I specifically like when I knew when I knew what you were doing and I heard about everything, I wanted to create the strongest fucking healer I possibly could. <laughs> Oh no, think. don't worry. I'm next level. I'm getting counter spell. <laughs> uh, that I can't will wait for, also be useful. I can't wait for Jubei to get counter spell, but that's going to be the 10th level. <laughs> Fucking hell. Also, I know he mentioned that the mission with the side party is not for another number of weeks. Is he, Are we ever going to have them level up? I don't know. We have to talk to him. I, I, I would assume the level ups either happen now or will happen after the mission. Yeah. Hmm. That's my that is my assumption I'm working with. I'm gonna be honest, guys, I've been itching to take Tick on a mission. <laughs> oh dude, I've been Same. I've been just waiting for G for Victor to get out there so I can start using my skeleton army. <laughs> like part of me like, oh man, I really like Loki like last mission, I was like, Oh man, I kinda wanna take Tick instead of <laughs> instead of Quentin. But I, I really didn't want to like enter like a terrible battle and then just the entire time I'm just like I wish I brought the death <laughs> <laughs> uh, pain the only I, one who even has a possibility of tanking is me is 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 not gonna lie I, I have a chance actually with actu the cast. actually ironic Victor too cause his AC is 20 with magic with uh with shield up yeah, if I if I equip the shield on cast as well as cast uh, some shield of faith on me, I can get myself to a twenty AC. Uh, Tick is a support, and therefore, right <laughs> no, you know, uh, it's not quite there with that. Also, the pup can try to uh, tank, but it won't be that good. Yeah. Yeah. The the fact is, we don't have a tank. It it could go really. We don't. We don't even have a frontliner. T tank nothing. We don't even got a frontliner. <laughs> See what happens, right? Is that we all just apply buffs to one person and they become our tank. <laughs> but, yeah, you know what? Who, who should it be though? Here's what we do: we just we get a skeleton, we put it in plate mail, and we start. I guess half plate is plate mail. It can't walk around and it doesn't have the strength. Put it in a half plate, buff the fuck out of it, and just send it to be our tank. <laughs> You're right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Give it some false light, because uh, my skeletons, uh, necromancer skeletons, also get extra hit points. Welcome back. Yo. Yeah. Welcome back. Guten Tag. So are we gonna RP? Or are we just gonna chat about what we're gonna do with the death? <laughs> I'm okay with either. I am currently trying to implement something. Oh yeah, yeah. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see if this works though. Oh yeah. Okay. There you go. <laughs> oh, what? Why is it? Oh. It's loading. It just took a while. No, no, I'm trying to fix it. Okay, good, good, perfect. 
Please, Quentin, will just sort of kind of open up the dialogue, just asking everyone a quick. Um, if you all could remind me, what is the next step after this with Heilani? Uh, hopefully after we know what we are dealing with in the camp, we'll be able to move in and help the Empress and Everin's father. Uh, frankly, until we know what we are dealing with, uh, it's reckless to move forward. Can't really make a plan off of it at the moment. You are right. It, w it is important to do a sort of surveillance first and foremost. But uh, no matter what is the case, uh, we need to get them out of there. I somehow doubt a frontal assault will do us any good with the, only the seven of us. If we're lucky, perhaps we can uh, at least get into a fo uh, or get to join up with them and help bolster their forces at least. But find a way to you, get sneak them out. You are saying an infiltration is in order. It would be easiest. Uh, though I myself do not have the best uh, capabilities of sneaking around uh, due to my any jingles as plate. <laughs> A little loud. He like kind of slightly smiles at that and is just yes, that definitely would be the case. Davia. Oh. Hmm. I'm curious, but how are, how are you when it comes to espionage? I am able to... I'm much more sneaky than him, for sure, and gestures to Jubei and then kind of crosses her arms. Not as... Uh, sneaky, I suppose, as Elani, but... Uh, sneaky <laughs> enough. I got food in my mouth, I'm sorry. You're also slipping into Lexus. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but, uh, hold on. Let me look over her stats real quick. Um, I think you got a proficiency in stealth. Give me a plus five. Yeah. yeah, plus five. Yeah. I'm rather sneaky. I can magically enhance myself to be a little sneakier myself as well. Well, all right. I was only wondering. I, in particular, am not exactly amazing at it, but I can do something of the sort. I was only wondering in the event that we all have to sneak about, though. I suppose if that were to happen, um, you would likely have to take off your armor, Jube. Well, that or I suppose if uh, Cinder has an extra spell to spare, I could also go invisible. I do, yes, but I can't use that while Helani's doing. Uh, I mean, I back. Obviously, not now, Cinder. I would refer to if we have to infiltrate when Helani gets back. Right. Uh, our other option, of course, is. Uh, I suppose if it looks like infiltration is not viable. Uh, Jibei looks around. Yeah, diversionary tactics can also be useful. It uh, oh, might suggest a diversion. It he might suggest fireball. Uh, yes, in fact. Uh, Fair. In two ways. I could see about drawing the enemy towards me, and as they gather around, uh, you could let her rip, uh, pussy. <laughs> let her rip? Yeah, uh, the fireball. Oh. Uh, that, hopefully, if we are lucky, that will clear out a number of them, and they may even give chase to me, and I could draw away a large number of their forces. While the rest of you move in. You know I did not know that fireballs had gender. Not her. Oh. Uh, well, I suppose I said her, but her, uh, uh, let her rip a... It is a bit of a... Yes, system. <laughs> Not more gender. Most people like to add gender to in a, otherwise inanimate objects. 
It is quite a common trait. Jimmy kind of thinks about it. And I suppose if I think about it, uh, most of the things involved in fire in my life tend to be feminine. <laughs> Small finger guns. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> <laughs> I'm lightning. That is true. All the women around Jubei are literally designed to, to hurt, harm him. <laughs> then it just looks at you oblivious, like... <laughs> Jubei's greatest threat are his teammates. <laughs> it's not wrong! I've taken more damage from my teammates than the enemy! <laughs> That's the thing, though. Cass is the only one that, like wouldn't really hurt someone because that's not what their spell the water spells are. Hashtag yeah. stop Jubei abuse. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never be fine. I'm not gonna be honest, tell me and Nikki talked about it, I never realized about it. Yeah, Jubei might be a bit of a masochist. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I Absolutely. Mean, did it really did that really take much thought? <laughs> It's not something I had considered. Tell me, and Nikki discussed it. Okay, okay. <laughs> that's it's, fair. It's not like when I built you, he's like total masochist. <laughs> Explains all the more emotional torture he was willing to go through. Yep. Yeah. As I'm, well as getting constantly shocked by Evren. Well, like I, it came out as a joke because it's like, well, he's the frontliner. He's okay with people blowing him up. He's okay taking all the hits. Does he enjoy it? <laughs> Maybe in specific, maybe in specific <laughs> contexts, he enjoys it. He definitely likes the like, thrill of it. <laughs> the fighting point is that he's dating Davio, and that's the most masochistic. I mean, point. right? <laughs> to be fair, it's very similar with like Ozen's case. You know, it's like, yeah, he's a nervous wreck, but admittedly, the adrenaline—he doesn't mind it. He's used to this stuff as a performer. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Some say adrenaline is like a different drug. <laughs> It gets you to a high, just a different one. That's it. It's very much with Jubei, it's like who he's dating says a lot about him. Really does, really does. <laughs> also us, though. Save him. <laughs> yes, this, uh, it just happened to happen to be Davi, that's just, just how the chips fell. <laughs> Meanwhile, through this whole mission, Davi had this look on her face of just like, why am I here? I don't care about the Empress. <laughs> Uh, and Juby would have pointed out empresses tend to be rich and usually rewarding when they get get back in power. <laughs> <laughs> it would be cruel to just leave her out. <laughs> exactly. <sighs> Honestly, oh, she needs dear. protection. Immediate change of heart. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, 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 I know Nikki's never seen Star Wars, but it's the same reason Han Solo went to save the princess. How rich? We wealthier than you can imagine. I don't know, I can imagine quite a lot of wealth. <laughs> <laughs> also because Gaston wants to become the new king or whatever he is. And I'm pretty sure we want to Yeah, yeah fuck Gaston. Yeah, fuck Gaston. I think that's, I think that's uh, at least some uh, motivation for Davia. Just to fuck mm -hmm. Gaston. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, I guess that's on with like 20% motivation, and then the rest is the money. Is the money, yeah. <laughs> Let's get this done. I, I like this gift the best. Part of oh, the like. storm. It looks super cool, though, and I love it. Uh, Do you like it? That's a good one. I, I guess back to RP, though. GB, I guess, would turn to uh, Ever uh, Everin, though, and go, So, Everin, uh... You know, you haven't actually, uh... You must be pretty excited with your father so nearby. Um, I am. I'm just more scared for you guys. Wait, why? <laughs> what is your father like? Well... As I said, he used to be a pirate. He looks over he... at Davi and kind of shrugs. <laughs> <laughs> no, My kind of guy? No, no, a, a bit different. From Davia, a lot different from Davia. He he changed his ways, but well, of course he's gonna be protective and really overprotective of me. But also, uh, he doesn't mm, probably know where I am. I mean, he might freak out a little bit that I'm just suddenly 
over here trying to find him. Wait, uh, what do you mean by completely different? Like he's very nice and stuff? Well, it depends on who you are. And... Uh... So if he's a dick, he's not that different. It's a bit hard to say. I don't. I don't know how to best describe him. It's kind of like, hmm. There's a bravado that kind of has, but with with people, of course. And if he was once a pirate, uh, do you know the name of his crew? Old crew. She shakes her head. Davia crosses her arms, kind of thinks about it for a moment. Yeah. Well. Hmm. It was a long time ago. But now he, has... he now he works as. For the general of the navy. Yeah, I'm just saying. Uh, hopefully, our people have not uh, come across one another at any point. Zubri so kind of looks over at Darby and thinks about uh, uh, was he still pirating when you were born, Evelyn? No, he he well, he stopped. So, well, then in that case, uh, Darby, uh, probably not. Well, not for me. I mean, the rest of my crew. They've been sailing for a long, long. He was a pirate that targeted other pirates. Oh, so. then there are the possibilities they came across one another. Mm-hmm. Actually, a rather strong one at that point. Evan, was he a pirate or a buccaneer? I don't know. He targeted both country and pirate. He really had no allegiance. Oh, well, I suppose he was in the, definitely a pirate. Yeah, I mean, the only difference really is a buccaneer is sanctioned by the crown. I mean, he did get sanctioned by the crown in some sort of sense, but that took a, a long time. Yeah, traitors. I don't know exactly what happened, because he never liked talking about it. So, I can't fill in a lot of details. But after he met Setsuna, he changed. Hmm. I suppose, uh, meeting the right person can tend to change people. Mm-hmm. Or are you... Or, well, she is a goddess. It is difficult for one not to change when in the presence of holiness. And he kind of looks at himself. I suppose you have a point there as well, twin. I have yet to... uh, Well, I guess that's a lie. I guess we kind of met uh, Setsuna for a moment, but... I have yet to converse with a deity of any sort that I am aware of, at least. Oh, we had a brief meeting with her, but that was kind of a bit a bit of time ago. Uh, yes, uh, hence why I use the word converse and not just meeting. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, she, it was a pretty weird meeting, yeah. yeah. More of a rescue than anything. Mm-hmm. I mean, we did find someone who's trying to be a deity of some kind. Trying to be a deity? Uh, I don't know what exactly he's doing, but he's... You know, he's not good. I can say that at the very least. Uh, I take it you are referring to a uh, black and dated friend. Mm-hmm. The one who tried to murder me at least twice? Uh, indeed. I... You say I... that as if we don't constantly come across people wanting to kill us. I know, but he specifically wanted to murder me. And not many people want to do that. <laughs> Jupiter's a side glance to Davia. <laughs> yeah, Davia has a look on her face. Davia has a look on her face like, I can't relate. <laughs> yeah, but he, he has a specific guy in me, and I've luck- we, we've luckily escaped him twice now, so... In any oh, case... Yeah, specific eye to you and every other half-god as far as we are aware. Mm-hmm. I just... I think I'm the only one who ever escaped from twice. In a uh, row. <laughs> Especially with a god intervention. Are you looking for our medal or something? I'm looking for understanding. <laughs> uh, well, I definitely understand that we got lucky twice when he showed up. Why did Satsuna step in? Why did a, why did a god stop? something like that because they're was... gods it's ho- the whole part of their job is to sit back and not do anything but she did do something well, mm. she is your mother Precisely. she also showed me about you davia specifically about you it 
is not uncommon for... Wait, what? Whoa. What, what was that about Davia and so specifically? Remember, remember the ah. dream I had? Yes, yes. Ah, yes. She showed me about you, and I... <sighs> Judah, you are really hard to hear. Yeah, I was wondering, because I know his voice is soft, but I was just like, oh, goddamn, this happened a lot. Um, I'm so sorry. <clears throat> no, you good. It is not uncommon for a god to give premonitions of a sort. Uh, Need to mind our own business. <laughs> Jimmy kind of shrugs noncommittally. As I said, never really had much dealing with the gods one way or the other. Even the gods in my home country believe that it is us to us to take care of our problems. Yeah, but she stepped in. She saved our lives. I have her, and it is humorous, but you do not seem to acknowledge your own uniqueness. I kind of don't want to at this point. Just a little bit. Well, do. You are a demigoddess. You mm. are, by all means, an exception to a rule we all thought was something that could not be passed, and yet here you are. That's the thing, though, that, that she broke the divine accord. Well, if I were a god... I would break something to protect someone that I love. But she didn't protect... Before we were going to be killed, the Black Knight killed my half-sister. She didn't save her. Is it possible she might not have been able to as well, Evren? Oh, she's looking to use you for some reason. I do not want to paint your mother in a bad light, but this is not the first time in history that there has ever been impartialness toward, or partialness towards blood. Hmm. You are more related to her than your half-sister is. There is no telling what she may have been thinking, but perhaps there was a preference being held. Or Maybe. she finds you more useful. Or it could have been simply put that the, she, since he was or she was already in the uh, knight's power, there was nothing she could do for her. But since we weren't, she could help us still. It is hard to say. Maybe. But... <sighs> Jubei? Uh, yes, Everett. After this is over and saving my dad and the Empress and stuff like that, we're going to help you next, okay? <laughs> very good, Evren. I'm sure I would be very much appreciate everyone's assistance with that. Good. <laughs> Can I inside him? Because I want to. I wonder if he's like embarrassed about it, though. I mean, knowing Juba, he probably is that he has problems to begin with. But like, fuck. <laughs> Sure, you can roll insight on him. Meanwhile, Davi just has an annoyed twitch to her brow like we should have dealt with that before. <laughs> Especially now that, like, it's up half my arm. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, with that, I'd say, I mean, he's not, like, embarrassed about it, but Jupe still, you could tell Jupe still got that very much of the, uh, yes, we'll deal with it, providing something bigger doesn't pop up. <laughs> I would say that kind of at that, he would just kind of frown a little bit, and it's just... Well, of course. We should make sure that this does get taken care of. In any case, until Satoshi gets back, uh, we don't have much of a lead to help me. Hopefully, though, when we get back to the uh, castle, and Jibe holds up the scroll of sending he had bought, uh, Victor will be able to use this to contact Satoshi, since he had met him. Mm -hmm. Well, that is good. When we get the necessary help that we can acquire, then we can begin on our mission towards your ordeal. <laughs> it would be nice to, I uh, admit, have to uh, have this off of my chest for the time being. 
Though the meditation I have been doing at night has been helping, it would seem. You have been meditating? Uh, yes, in fact, uh... Jimmy thinks up, I can't remember, Jimmy told you what he saw in when he had his little freak out, right? I think? He did. Yeah. 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 Uh, I have been, uh... Well, at night I've been speaking with my master in meditation. Really? Every night? Well, most nights. Once again, glances over at Davia. <laughs> but, uh, when I'm alone, I generally do, yes. Hey. This, uh, Worry of uh, tranquility he is trying to uh, turn me into is a different sort of thing I never thought I would imagine in my wildest dreams. Well, I'm glad that it seems to be assisting you. <sighs> it is interesting, though, that interaction I had. I had attempted to remove the curse, but it had denied. The curse seems to be of a much stronger form. I wonder what will be necessary to remove it. Perhaps if I gain in power, but hopefully we will not have to wait that long for such. Is uh. As far as I am aware, this is a curse not just from from lower level creature, but a <sighs> arch demon with a sky goal. So there is no doubt that it is going to take some time. And anybody else notice Helani rolling perception checks and not doing so well? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks kind of bad. Oof. I do not see where these checks are being made. General. General. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help but notice the posting, the 10 perception. Like, oh my god, they have a plus 8 to perception. <laughs> yeah. Sauce. Sure, everything's fine. Everything's okay. Hopefully her father isn't dead. I, I'm just waiting for uh, them to pop over where you hear, and so Halani comes screaming back to the camp with arrows chasing her. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, Halani's dead. It doesn't come back. No, the black light has saved her. <laughs> uh, as I said, I don't think the death's going to be too high because if as long as Halani just books it, all attacks against her are disadvantage. Right. And Halani, as a throw, can move 90 feet, so there's very few things that can catch her. <laughs> and we switch maps back to this map. That's not a good sign. <laughs> Fear. Yeah. In case, I guess after about 20 minutes past her half an hour passes of them waiting. She was like, uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm getting a little nervous at this point. Uh, Great. Cinder, would you know if the spell ends? Um, I would do, yes. Uh, I that, is, that is, uh, good to know at least. So I'm assuming Helani must be still invisible at least. I'd hope so. I'm sure she's fine. I'm not really tested at the forum. No. Came back immediately Screams. after Davia said, I'm sure she's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your guys' timing is crazy. So Halani's dead. <laughs> so Halani got captured. You guys are gonna have to save her. Okay. What? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I'm sure Nano's fucking with us. <laughs> I know. That's why I'm yeah. waiting for him to tell him, <laughs> tell us if he's fucking with us. <laughs> um, the moment when he's not. 
<laughs> Crystal. Crystal, you're not what? fucking with me either. I'm sorry. I watched I... a guy pee. <laughs> Are you seriously telling us Crystal's caught? No, she's not caught. Okay. Okay, I was <laughs> waiting. She... Asshole. So literally, she's arriving just as Davi is like, I'm sure she's fine. <laughs> I have expertise in pretty much anything I needed to make a check-in. Shout out to that 10 and 11, though. <laughs> well, it took... <laughs> the, okay, mission... the 11 was um, a straight intelligence check, and I have a plus one in that. So, so the mission took her the full hour. Okay, so she's bolting out of there visible, then. She had about 30 seconds I'm, of invisibility I'm, Yeah, left I'm pretty much rolling when she arrives. Oh, okay, so, yeah, so it took her it 20 goes. minutes to get the camp, 20 minutes in there, and 20 minutes to get back. Gotcha. Ish, yeah. Yeah, yeah give Somewhere her a take, I'm something at. like that. I, I, I was just, yeah, I was just giving time frame. Fair enough, okay. Uh, Ilana, you're back. Um, wait, 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 wait. Uh, before I, like, enter, can I do another, uh, perception check about that feeling I had? And also, do I still have that feeling? Um, the closer you get to them, no, but yeah, you can make another perception. You're, you're looking around, you take one last look around to, like, the empty tree line. And, uh, it's a little eerie, but no. You don't see anything. Okay. Are you... Oh, is she back yet? Yeah. How far away from camp did that feeling go away? Uh... Oh, about... Far away from the party camp, not other camp. From the party camp, um... Shortly, shortly before you arrived. I would say about five minutes before you got there, it kind of dispersed. Okay. And now she arrives. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, how did everything go? You see her just, like, kind of, like, looking around, kind of, like, wait, oh, wait, okay, wait, no, because I'd be entering inside, right? Or you're waiting out, wait, no, wait, don't worry, no, mind, don't worry, I, it's okay, yes. You're doing fine. amazing. I remember the entire situation, <laughs> and, like, I'm like, you guys came towards me, and then I went, and, yeah, I was like, that's what the situation is, we didn't go all the way back, it's fine. <laughs> this is a big fat mood. <laughs> There's a lot happening, okay? I feel it. One, one you kind of like slightly nervously looking around, kind of like behind her, as like she kind of like approaches. So, how did it go? Well, I made it back in one piece. Mm, well, that is good. Um, seeing from seeing from like the simile and everything and you know how she had essentially reappeared before us from what i understand um mm -hmm. does she yeah she does she seem unharmed yeah all right well um he would just kind of give her a quick look over um before kind of putting on the mask once again and just well that is good um what did all did you find out also davia that was good timing. Davia, you're a bead. Oh shit. <laughs> Feels bad. Sorry, Feels Davia bad, went man. to the bathroom just now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Turns around to see Davia gone. Uh, Squatting in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> Jupe just look. Uh, but yes, uh, what did you discover out there, uh, Heloni? Um, well, the camp is quite large. It's over 200 units that I could tell, but, you know, that's a lot of people to count. And I didn't really want to stick around for that long to get an exact number. So that group is established. 
enlarge. Yes, I couldn't see any weapons for sieging, but that doesn't mean that I necessarily saw them. They could have been hidden. Get the. So, just so I have an Im uh, I take a uh, uh, So, what are we looking at for these uh, fortifications, as far as the Empress and uh, Everin's father goes? Screams when my brain doesn't know how to answer that. <laughs> to be well, fair, that's probably also just Heilani's brain, like, ah. Uh... <laughs> uh, Jubail just kind of look at Heilani. Uh, in other words, uh, does it look like the, uh, the enemy is building siege equipment to storm the place at the moment? They were cutting down trees, but they didn't look to me like they were actively building anything. Jube kind of shakes his head. No, that's a bad sign. Normally that is the first step of building the siege equipment in the area. Hmm. We probably don't have much longer, honestly, if we are going to save them. Um, Halani? Yes? She holds- Everyone holds her hand out. <laughs> the kind of like, looks at you confused for a second and then like remembers and she gives you back your- Figurine. Thank you. Oh, wait. Roll me a... a hold on to the figurine check. Did it fall out of your Just kidding. <laughs> I will stab you. Uh, slide a hand? <laughs> oh. oh, no. It's in the woods somewhere. No, it's Shut not. up. <laughs> no. Too late. You can't I dropped it when that guy was peeing, and then I found it on my way back. It's fine. Now you know it's been watching you. It's really the goat. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you left me behind. <laughs> You're very bad. Is my goat just a possessed demon? <laughs> you know what? You know what it is? You, you shouldn't have said that. You know what it is now? It's that fucking demon goat thing we killed at the castle. No. <laughs> Shh, don't get my secrets, Heath. Is that actually what it is? That'd be amazing. <laughs> that was the secret that Ayla and Estevan were trying to hide. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> the demon goat. <laughs> the reckoning. Alright, anyway. <laughs> he just wants me to ride him. Is it, That's why. Uh, anyways, anyways, yeah. <laughs> So, the uh, enemy is building siege equipment, meaning at least uh, that would indicate that the fortifications that the Empress and Everin's father have is uh, secure enough that they do not feel comfortable storming it without it. That is an advantage, at least. Perhaps, Jubika starts rubbing his chin, it may be possible to even strike down their workforces. If they have no siege equipment, they might give up the entire siege entirely. So, sabotage. It is a possibility. Um, I do have something else to say. Oh, of course, Alani. When I was on my way back, I felt that something was watching me, but my invisibility was still up. But I couldn't see anything watching me. But it was... I don't know. It was just this feeling I had. Interesting. Uh, no. It only went away like a couple minutes before I arrived here. Nano. Nano. Uh, question for Jimmy, because I don't know if this is a meta qu idea for him or not. Okay. Would you be able to go... Because Jube had that funny feeling of being watched when fucking... Uh, Gaston was visiting the castle of an invisible creature. Wait, what? Yeah, remember the thing that I you... was just there, there was a creepy feeling. He's just I guess it's like wondering. Uh, he also had that creepy feeling of being watched when Gaston was by. With the he had something watching us. Right, that. Um, so are you asking if you if he would think it's the same thing? I guess suppose that's kind of his thing. Yeah. 
I guess, uh, I was just making sure Jubei had that. I was just double checking. I could, that was a scene with Jubei. I've been a long time ago. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I believe he witnessed because he was sitting with Gaston during the tournament and oh, you guys right. did yeah, yeah, see yeah. that extra figure go through that portal. That is not good. It could be a multitude of things. Did you, uh, by any chance, recognize what the, uh... No, wait, uh, Nick, yeah, no, quick question again. Uh, do, we, we know there was these, these are no longer mercenaries or fucking bandits. This is a group, uh, organized group, but who were they again? Do we know that, or? They're members of the, it's, as far as, um, you were told, they are members of the Tharsian army. Okay, yeah, it was the Tharsian army. Is it possible that, uh, and this is a wild shot in the dark, but is it something to consider? Is it possible that the army was sent by Gaston? Does Gaston wield that much power? Well, if he is in line to become the new ruler of this country, I would have to assume, yes. Um, especially because Ephraim's father is involved, right? Indeed. It only doubles down the ability, the likelihood. And there was some strange feeling I had at the tournament of an invisible thing watching us at the tournament. Hmm. That is interesting. And I personally would think that it is rather possible. In any case, that could be dangerous. So you think you may have been noticed, Halani? Um, perhaps, but it could also just be me being absolutely crazy. <sighs> Interestingly I... enough, uh, Jube, this may be your arcane knowledge that I'm asking for, but with how spells of that type and things work, if she is invisible, would it know of her presence, or if it's actually her? For all we know, that thing may have been able to know that someone was there, but not who. There are two ways it could work. If the creature was able to sense her without vision, a creature with a sort of blind sight, let us say, then it would know of a creature pie, but not the specific person. On the other hand, there is a spell that lets you see invisible creatures, and there are also uh, very few, but if there are some creatures that can see invisibility 24-7, they have illusions do not work on them. Several demons, in fact, have that very same trait. Interesting. So... Wow. I do believe that the main message that we can draw from this information is that we have to be even more careful, for we are definitely messing with something that we do not quite understand just yet. I would agree with that. This is dangerous. And, but by the same token, as I said, we cannot stand long. We are obviously beginning to build the equipment needed to attack. We need to either strike or get them out of there sooner rather than later. What do you have in mind so far, Jubei? Jubei crosses up. Elani, did you see what area they were the cutting down the trees? That was just the area around the camp, right? Yeah, within our camp. Um, just trees around the camp. It wasn't really a specific location, just where they got the tents and everything set up. So we're on the perimeter of the camp, then? Yes. That could be useful. It is possible if we got snick up on them while they were chopping down the trees, we could at least thin their numbers a bit. hit and run tactics could be useful with our smaller group. But wouldn't that be a contestant over several different occasions? It would be, but each contestant would slow them down further. As I said, if they are not comfortable attacking the keep without fortifications, that means they are obviously worried. 
that they would fail. On the other hand, if we soften their numbers and destroy their siege equipment, the odds will for them storming the place will drop drastically with each attempt we hit. It may be possible we will force them into a advantageous siege upon them, and if they do that, we can also strike in from behind while they siege. A few fireballs can do wonderful damage to an enemy. On the other hand, he taps his chin. We could also send in, and obviously only with your permission, Halami. We could send you back in to infiltrate the keep itself if you think you could. Though that could be dangerous, I admit. Yuzu would have to get closer, so then I have the invisibility time to do that, but... Mm. It, is also, it is also I possible. I believe that is a good idea. Uh, Actually, since she has already been detected, there is a chance that if she were to go again, she might be putting herself up to unforeseen danger. You are correct, but I was going to say it may be also viable that we combine the two ideas. If we could create a diversionary attack from behind, drawing them away, Hilani could sneak in invisible. As far as I'm guessing, I would guess only one thing in that camp would be able to detect her. If not, I would sure they would have struck out and attacked her at the time they had. I suppose you're right, yes. Aeson mm -hmm. strokes at his channel. Mm -hmm. It would probably be better if no, you sent me No, I didn't think in. we... Oh wait, don't worry, no, I just... Don't worry. No, it's okay, my brain was having a seizure about what was happening. Oh, like, was like, I was like, it was like, was it Aeson that we brought? And I was like, oh wait, no, it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Looks over at Aeson. That is true, Aeson. I suppose it would make sense since you are the one they recognize. But, uh, and he looks at clanky clank armor of Aeson. Are you sure you can sneak in? <laughs> I can take the armor off. If you are confident, I suppose that is a viable option as well. We can strike at them, and while we are keeping the enemy busy, you strike, move in to tell them the reinforcements are there. It may even be possible to make a pincer attack movement if we draw them out for a counter attack from Everin's father's men to move in while the other army is distracted. Um, if, if it's easier, you can just call him Toland. Okay. You never told me his name! <laughs> um... Yeah, no, see, Everett hasn't told anyone, but... I know, yeah. I can't, I will keep calling Everett's dad until you, Everett tells me in character his name. Yeah, Everett, Everett just did. Oh, okay, you said Heath, so I got confused. Sorry, I meant to say Jibay. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, Jibay, Tolan. His name's Tolan. Tolan uh, oh. Vassier. Okay, well, Tolan, then, with his forces, mm -hmm. would be able to strike in uh, from I the can other also... side. Sorry. Oh, no worries. But... He does have a pirate name that Valvia might recognize. I, I don't know. Um, he went by the Devil's Reaver, or just Reaver for short. That's what little I got off of him. Valvia has a look on her face like that's really lame. <laughs> <laughs> he was the showboating kind of guy. Does she recognize the name? Says Blood Eagle. I mean, it's cool. <laughs> Davi is there for it's better. <laughs> exactly. Pot, meat, kettle. Um. Uh, make me a history check, Davi. Davi, yeah. look up hypocrite. Sees picture. Can you, loves the word. Can you? Can you? Can you hey, Nano, can you roll it for me? I'm away from my computer at the moment. Oh. How dare you? I'm on my laptop. Oh, no. Oh, damn. Okay, a 17. Yeah, you've heard of him. You guys operated in different parts of the ocean, but you've heard of the name. So her crew has never attacked it? The cr it's cruise on? No, your crew's never met in the sea or fought one another, which is probably for the Got it. Uh, Alright. In any case, it would be possible to make a pincer attack movement uh, 
if we could, and then perhaps even during the attack, we would be able to get the Empress out with your, uh, <clears throat> with Toland. You said there was roughly around 200 soldiers to your guess estimate, Helani. Correct. Well, that's only 33 apiece. We should be fine. <laughs> Just with a stupid smile. Obviously, I'm kidding, but... Uh, mm. In any case, we would be able to draw out a large number of them. Honestly, the best bet is for me to move in forward myself. If I take a defensive stance, I have a feeling most of them would not be able to harm me. If Cinder launches a few fireballs to get their attention... Uh, hmm, actually... He taps I can try the hypnotic pattern. How many can you get with that, Evelyn? Uh, let me take a look-see. <laughs> hypnotic um, pattern. Each creature in the area. 30 foot cube, yeah. Mm-hmm. Jubei, I should ask. Um, and he kind of, like, nervously kind of almost twiddles a little bit with his fingers, his thumbs. Um, but um, he just kind of asks, um, uh, is this a situation in which we will have to kill people? More likely than not, uh, yes, and, uh, or, yeah, there, yes, uh, Quentin. I believe this will require people to die. Okay. Um, um yeah, 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 Oh, hello. Mm. Um, since you didn't mention it, I'll go ahead and mention it on your stead. She did note that there were cavalry, archers, heavy infantry, and regular infantry of, with mixed within this military. So she it's didn't like... say anybody that would uh, obviously be considered a wizard or a mage, but they probably have them. Oh yeah, I, I I would be surprised if they didn't have at least a couple minor casters. It's a full regiment then, like fully decked out with full units. Okay. Yeah, they got a little bit of everything in there. Yeah, I wasn't sure if they would have cavalry because I wasn't sure if they came in by boat or not. Cavalry is usually less common with that tactic. Uh, well, first is to the northeast. They would have come by land as okay. opposed to by boat. Yeah, yeah. But there's not too many of those because it's a heavily wooded area and cavalry aren't super useful in the woods exactly so if we're keeping so my best bet is if we stay in the forest line uh we know the uh cinder you obviously know the range of the counter spell correct i do yes so if we stay out of the range of the troops uh, at the full flung uh, fireball to start off the comp the attack hmm. cavalry makes things more difficult but a fireball in the center of the cavalry would probably disrupt a lot. Horses don't generally like being exploded. Do we know how large their forces are or how powerful? Uh, we are looking at around 200 soldiers from what uh, Helani's best estimate is. Can we fight 200 soldiers? Again, they, we are they're not going in to win. We are going in to disrupt. Should we get Aeson's friends? Mason, would that be okay with your group? Uh, well, if you're intent on going in with this plan, I don't like it. I'd rather try to sneak into the castle myself. Well, though, no, that is the plan. The distraction is for you to sneak in. No, 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 no. Just don't worry about a distraction. Uh, are you certain with that creature that can see invisibility that he's safe? Well, we least. don't know what that is. It could be that. It could be something else. But here's here's the problem that I have with it. Stay, you go and distract. If there's a creature that detects invisibility out there, and it saw Halani, who's to say it didn't see you guys? Hmm. You believe it if might they have cavalry you. and 200 men, they could pincer you instead. That is true. Safer if I go alone. Well, if you are certain... But you're not going alone. Well, he would have to. No, you're bringing me with you. Everin. This is my father on the line. I'm not per gonna budge. Precisely. 
Which is why we need to be smart about how we approach this. You know what? Your father is hanging on a ledge 60 feet in front of you, and you wanted to save him. But there is also a lever five feet ahead that might be able to pull him up. Would you not want to at least try the lever before you run forward? This is a chance that it could work, and it would result in the least of casualties. Oh. Do not risk yourself in a situation where nothing is certain. That's the thing, though. He probably has the castle trapped up. You don't know anything about that. I. Jason has been here longer and has seen more than we have. He knows more than what we do. All right, I, I'm going to take off the sapphire necklace I've kept since, like, the day one of session. I'm just going to hand it to Ace and give this to him. He'll know what it means. Hmm, very well. The other thing I guess we need to worry about, though, even if you go ahead, uh, you have the sentry stone with you, so at least you'll be able to report whether or not you make it in. Exactly. And on the off chance they do capture me, it is only me that gets captured. That is also you are fine with that. Wouldn't be my first rodeo. In any um, case, we do need a plan if you do get captured, though. I still think... I will use the Sending Stone. If I feel that I am in danger of getting captured, I will let you know. And I will... hide the stone somewhere. Fair. Actually, I can... Yes, that, that might be the best. Uh, I'll keep this necklace on me if any of you can locate an object. Then you'll be able to find me through that. But if I make it in, you will know. Our Cinder. Yes. Are you capable of such a magic? Of what exactly? Like an object. Um. No. Not currently. I have not learned that. Uh, actually, actually, to be fair, we should move right now. Aizen did bring up a point that if that invisible creature, or whatever found Helani, found us, it is foolish to say in this spot. We should move this from this area immediately. Alright, but I should mention while that specific spell is something I am capable of casting. I would need a day to prepare it. So, if Aeson does get caught, we are going to need time before we can find him. That is fair enough, but at the moment I think we should move. Uh, so we'll kind of just move. Get Maybe get a little closer, but circumvent around the side. So we're not in the same area. Okay. And while we do so, I will send Shatori Toga up and just kind of do like a scan of the area up ahead from the sky, because, you know, it's a fucking owl, it's a forest, nobody will think that's too weird. <laughs> Fair enough. So I'll scout ahead with uh, Shatori Toga. So I will make my perception make check. Perception. Okay, and that's a D20 plus 3 at advantage. Jeef. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it seems to be an empty fort. Okay, everyone, let's keep moving. And we'll move a little, like I said, we'll, we'll kind of go around, but try to get a little closer, so instead of 20 minutes from camp, we're about 15 from camp. Alright. Okay, 
with that, I suppose the next thing we need to do... So, Aizen, are you ready for this? Well, I've been waiting months to get into that keep. Quite ready. Cinder? Of course. Okay, Aizen. You take care of yourself in there. If things go wrong... Hmm. I suppose we'll have to move in to try to help, but we may have to go with the hit and run tactic in the end after all, but hopefully that won't come to this. Don't worry. Had to be this way. I'm ready. If everything works out, we'll be able to plan a proper attack between Tallinn's forces and the rest of you things should work out indeed I hope they do I guess we cast invisibility on him while he takes his armor off and he moves yeah he'll hand his armor to uh, whomever wants to take it for now Quentin will take it. Sorry. Um, nobody happens to have a bag of holding that we could put this in, and then Aeson can take it with him and put it on when he gets to the castle. Has he already left? No, not yet. Taking off the armor, he <laughs> Quentin kind of like takes it and just kind of inspects it, and I'm just my. Hmm. He's like inspecting it. It's just, did you have to get this custom fit? I bet it would be difficult to find armor for a man of your size. Yes, unfortunately, those of us as tall as I am uh, tends to cost a bit more, because it needs to be custom fit for us. Mm, well, it is of nice craftsmanship. A bit heavy, if you ask me. But <laughs> I suppose that is its purpose. I will take good care of it while you are gone. I appreciate it. He nods and smiles. I'm already starting by the dissertation cleaning it at this point, because it's probably dirty. And Judah, you can add a plus one set of plate armor into your. Jesus Christ, it's a plus one plate armor? Lord. Yeah, it's a plus one plate Time armor. Time to give that to Jubei. Because Aeson's going to probably die. He's <laughs> not going to die. I love a hand me down. <laughs> <laughs> It'd have to get uh, fitted for Jubei. It's still plus one, though, and more AC to Jubei is the best. <laughs> Me panicking because the game recognizes the plate armor is mine, and now I have 21 AC. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me discount it real quick. One I mean, do you not want a thick 21 AC? Equ unequip extra armor or shield from item details. <laughs> <laughs> You can also just manually flip your AC back to normal, Judah. You're very right. I forgot that this is an option. <laughs> <laughs> or who am I? All right, I had. Did you even equip heavy armor as a grave cleric? I think. I think grave cleric does get heavy. I cannot. No. No. That's not. tempest. Tempest. Tempest war. Can use heavy. The big. It's boy. like half of the cleric domains. Yeah, half the clerics can, half of them can't. That's why I wasn't sure. But yeah, so you couldn't even equip it if you wanted to. Well, you could equip it, but you wouldn't get full. Stop making me feel poor, Jesus. Oh. And in any case, uh, be careful, Isn't it? We will wait for you till you will receive word from you. Indeed. You all stay vigilant and careful as well. We will do our best. Speak with, speak with Gerlin and Dalinar, and perhaps some of the townsfolk. I know they haven't been very happy 
with the circumstances around here. <laughs> it's possible we could get a few more allies on our side, but against a full regiment, that is dangerous. Yes. Yes, it is, but no more so than the rest of you taking them on by yourself. I don't know how many men Tallinn has in there, but it's not much. Tallinn. That's what I said. You said Tallinn. That's what I... It's the same thing! No. Tallinn? Poland. Alright. <laughs> tomato, tomato. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's like an accented kind of, like... Evren would still correct him. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, Cinder, whenever you're ready, I am ready. There you are. And with that, Hasten is gone. Well, he's dead. You see I little, would... <laughs> he's fucking dead. You oh see little God. footsteps uh, go off. Jube just Jackson, thinks in his head, we should have picked viable. someone who wasn't quite so heavy. <laughs> you know what? Hey, Cinder's just be, feel like being a bitch. I'm like, okay, you should be in the middle of the camp now. Drop concentration. <laughs> this will be a fun experiment. <laughs> wow. Nana <laughs> was like, oh, you better hope that Cinder doesn't lose concentration while I was doing my stuff. I'm like, yeah. She like trips Boy, and falls over, takes one point of damage, drops concentration. That feeling when Asen dies and the plus one plate armor disappears mysteriously with him. <laughs> Therefore, uh, nobody gets anything out of it. <laughs> she <Wait> dies, <laughs> and there's just like a pile of ash in uh, whoever's inventory. <laughs> Uh, when he said custom fit, he said custom fit. <laughs> oh, that's the thing, though. Uh, I, th I think uh, Quentin would like it to be Ash, so he can start rubbing on people. Like his right. dirt. <laughs> You're right. He uh, gets something out of it. You There's... could plate armor. You yeah. could plate armor. <laughs> BRB, guys, I just gotta use the washroom. Yeah. Alright. Um, with that, do you guys head back to the town? No, we embark no? on a journey never to return. Well, aren't we waiting, though? I believe... Well, no, because I guess he is going to be taking a bit of time. I, I, I don't actually know. I'm, I'm going to have to ask Keith when he gets back. Oh. Yeah, why wouldn't we stay? Because, no. Chances for us being tailed by that invisible beast, I guess. You don't know what it is. It is a beast until proven otherwise. It could be Gaston. Your Gaston. It could be the bee bag. Who knows? I know what it is, though. It's Kiros' spirit watching us from the grave. Dang, it's she Bill. guessed it. It's actually Ina from another dimension. It's Bill. <laughs> this, is what, this is what happens when Einar uses uh, his rune. <laughs> his left eye goes into this dimension. I just can't wait to see what is fucking. Why is it always the one eye thing, though? Are, do you want to be sans that much? Because from what I understand, no one's fucking ability has been revealed yet. So I'm just, why? I'm excited. What ability? No, it's it's a call to Odin, not Sam. Omen um. ability. Never. Ares. Um. Oh yeah, that. Because oh, Odin as in, has the all-seeing eye. Uh, <coughs> as in the actual ability, or as in the ability, like the passive, like oh, we only wait. have. Yeah, actually, that's a good question, uh, Storm. Do we have a active and a passive? You don't. Okay, so I don't uh, think I we've guess. gotten to that point in this yeah, game. You've not gotten to that. No, point. I know, I know that, but like, ugh. we only have the look thing. That's specific to us, that, which is... That's all that is for now. Okay. Yeah. Well, we, we, so, it becomes it, active later. It's something we discuss with you, correct? Yes. It gradually grows like a... Kind of like a... Um, uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> kind of like, like a vegetable. 
It's kind of like a sure. special. Fe- I, I I think the best way to describe it, Storm, is a special feat for our character specifically. Mm. Yes, it's it's like an artifact attached to you, but it grows as you grow. I mean- me and his character is very <laughs> evident on what our physical trait is. Everyone else is a bit mysterious, besides maybe Candy, but I'm not sure exactly what's wrong with Candy. <laughs> Just having, is... having something wrong with her. Actually, what's yeah, wrong Candy. Candy doesn't actually have a persistent trait, from what we've seen, at least. Her physical... invisible friend. Well, I don't know if that's a trait or that's just candy. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> wrong game. I don't know. Wrong D- different game. game, guys. Yeah, we're back. I'm back. So, uh, so, so we send Asen off. Uh, I guess yes, we wait. Send a- Asen off. Uh, now, are you gonna wait there? Or are you gonna go back to town? I want to wait. I mean, let's wait there because we don't want to be too far away from him if things go wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me make a couple of then... super secret rolls. That advantage. <laughs> I mean, as a party would be disgusting. I mean, the I, Jube was under the assumption we were staying until he got in, and you heard something back. Yeah. I mean, you I'll can also bring it up if has again. A opinion. Yeah. Also, I'll send. Uh, I will send Shatori Toga 100 feet ahead of us to kind of scout the area out from a bird's eye view. I might be able to see the camp from my bird eye this close. Okay, he's actually doing really good with stealth. Ooh, that's nice. 16, nat 20, and 19. Okay, those will beat passives. He's a sneaky well, boy. Not my 24. He's got one dexterity. Give him a prank. <laughs> yeah, dex was his dump stat. <laughs> and my twenty-seven. Right. His his last. I don't one want to hear pretty... it. Ten eleven. His last one was pretty booty, but that doesn't matter. Booty. Okay, so how long do you guys wait? Till he do you calls wait the us. Hour? I mean, do you he's wait supposed the to. Hour? Yeah, well, he's supposed to call us when he gets in. With the sending stone, that was the plan. Yeah. All right. So, so if you're gonna wait that long, that's yeah, well, fine. Um, about an hour and twenty-ish minutes pass. The sending stone buzzes. I guess I'm not <laughs> sure how it's supposed to like ring. I think it just starts uh, speaking. <laughs> who's got the sending stone? I do. All right, um, the Sending Stone begins to speak. Well, I made it here. Just barely. Are you okay? What happened? Well, it took me a little longer than an hour to get here. The last 20 minutes were a little harrowing, but I made it. That's good. Well, did, do you know exactly what happened, though? Or... Guess the invisibility went down, and I had to worry about people following Oh dear. Yeah, that that happens. But thankfully, I'm in. I'm going to meet with Tolland and the Empress soon. I will call you back when I have details later. Uh, warning though, there might be some traps and stuff, so just just look out for uh, something. You know? <laughs> hear screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Insert Wilhelm scream. Yeah. <laughs> he has to know about the traps. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm being led to them, so I don't think I have to worry about it. Huh? Once I made it in the castle, I showed them your necklace, and now they're taking me to meet your father. Okay, good. Okay. It- any case, do you want us to head back to town, or do you wish us to stay here for this? Head back to town. It will take a little while to get this working and rallied up. Very well. Do we right, just... I'll, I'll keep the sending stone on me, so if anything happens, I, I'm right here, okay? Very well. <laughs> Let's go, everyone. Alright. 
So you guys head on back to the town. Where Ragnar and Gurlin are in the middle of the camp having a arm wrestling contest. Looks like Ragnar is winning right now. Yeah, it, uh, we are back, everyone. Yeah, we were able to send Asen ahead into the camp. He uh, right now is speaking with the Empress and uh, Tolan. Um, we should be okay with the group of us together. We have to work out a way to uh, break this siege they are under. Dalinar looks over and he's like, oh, hang on, just hang on. I got three gold on Gurlin here. One moment. Uh, Tyrael looks over and he has his like long corn pipe. He pulls it out and blows a puff of smoke out. Hmm. So he went into the castle alone, huh? Uh, Halani stands next to Dalina, crosses her arms, and says, Well, you bet on the wrong person. I warned about him. Yeah, but he didn't want to listen. <laughs> uh, Dalinar looks over. Oh, did I? You want to put your money where your mouth is? Not in particular. Uh, doesn't seem you have much faith in your pick, then. As the two are just straining in the middle, but uh, Ragnar has a cocky look on his face. Uh, Tyrael looks uh, looks over, takes another puff of his uh, tobacco. <sighs> well, I can't say I'm surprised that he went in alone. After all, he has been quite worried about the Empress. As I said, for the time being, it is uh, all we can do. So we will have to wait and see what occurs from here. You hear uh, Gurlin just let out a pained groan as he's starting to lose. The fact that Ragnar is struggling with a, like an old man kind of makes me laugh a little internally. <laughs> <laughs> you want to arm wrestle him next? <laughs> uh... Gurlin's pretty yoked for an old man. Yeah. <laughs> he's like Master Roshi when he's buffed up. I'll do it. Oh, God. In I'll any, do it. In any case, I think it is time for us to uh, continue forward. We will need to work out our best strategy. Perhaps we can gather some people from the village to help us with this. Tyrael takes another puff of his uh, tobacco <sighs> yes I suppose that's the case you could do that I'd personally avoid that Zizoth man he's a little weird then you guys hear Dalinar go damn it as uh, Gurlin loses the arm wrestling contest Halani just walks away without saying anything. From from Dalinar. <laughs> you see dial on our hand Tyrael three cold. Tyrael just kind of smirks. Yes, I'd speak with um I'd speak with Ali Para. If you're looking for anybody to speak to about this. Perhaps Powell and Altarian. Those are your three individuals. Jagan isn't bad, but he's a shopkeep. Mikael is also a smith. Uh, there is one other smith in town. His name's Alistair. He is a Vo man. I think he can read this. He has it's quite the unusual one. forge. 
think he can rework plus one plate. <laughs> uh, because I see. Uh, well, I suppose that is a good place to check. <sighs> this is going to be a uh, difficult time for us, but we have to keep moving. Tyrael looks at you for a moment, Jube. So what is the plan? Well, at the moment, I think our best bet is the enemy is at the moment building siege equipment to assault, uh, to assault their position. It may be possible that if we can strike at them with the proper force to disrupt their ability, we can either make them turn around, leaving their backsides to an attack from the keep if there is enough soldiers in there, or perhaps destroy enough to, uh, of their equipment that they will have to turn around on their own. I see. Honestly, hmm. it is that, or I can't see any realistic way to get the Emperors out without this being a fight. And with 200 soldiers in the way, it will be difficult to sneak her out. Well... It would indeed be difficult to sneak her out. I don't know how well destroying the siege equipment's going to go, if they have any, but... This is the Tharsian military, and they are a bit... He thinks a moment, trying to ponder on the word. Persistent. I wouldn't say savage, but brutal. Hmm. Yeah, that is possible. Uh... Yeah, but in any case, even if we can force them to attack the keep at a less than favorable position as well, that means we can strike them from behind. Yes, perhaps. It's worth a shot. Apart from that, I can't think of any better way to do it at the moment. As I said, the only other option we have is hit and run tactics, but with their cavalry, that will be difficult. I suppose if we could strike the cavalry down first, we would be able to do that, but even then... Well, I suppose we'll have to wait and see how your talks with the villagers go. Uh, Jimmy kind of looks around. Uh, Everin, perhaps you would be better. This is your father and empress, after all. <clears throat> <clears throat> Looks at that negative one persuasion. <laughs> I can try. I don't know how exactly I will convince people, but I will do my best. Do we have eyelashes. Do we have anything to offer them if they help us? I mean, yeah, it dep depends, I guess, whether or not they are loyal to the Empress, but uh, I don't know what we can offer them as far as uh, I'm sure the Empress has uh, things to offer more than we do at this point, but... Hmm. And we're, what are we trying to do again? I'm sorry. I kind of we're trying to it. rouse the, uh, the, the, the villagers into becoming a militia. Okay. So, Jube would give you basic phrase. Uh, basically, we need them to rally behind the Empress. This is a case of their own freedoms and sociabilities. After all, you know Gaston. I have a feeling with him as Emperor, uh, this country would be in for our dear, very dark times. Mm -hmm. uh, they would need to unite around their rightful ruler, perhaps. Inspire them to strike out and defend their freedoms, the sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Looks about... Apart from that, I think, as I said, traps might be useful as well for these. Hmm, actually, you said there is a blacksmith in town, correct? Uh... Yes, two. Hmm, a pitfall trap could be useful as well, maybe for the horse cavalry charge. We could lie it in the forest if they chase us down. They might be able. We might be able to catch them surprised with that. In any case, numbers and men will be needed to make this plan work. 
So the first thing we need is to see if we can get any of the people to join us. Yeah, uh, I guess we'll head to the first black. One the blacks. Uh, you said there was two blacksmiths. What were? Who are they again exactly? I can't remember the exact details or the difference between them. I guess I should ask. Mikael, who is a human man, and Alistair, who is a vo. Okay, so there wasn't any like political lining between the two. It's just one's human, one's a vo. Well, one has a very weird forge. <laughs> okay, I think that was the. It's vo. not Mikael. Mikael has a normal forge. Uh, Alistair has. Uh, well, I'll explain that when you get to it. Yeah, you know I'm curious. Let's go to Alistair Gessa first, I guess. Unless someone has, <laughs> unless somebody else has a different uh, opinion. No. No different opinions. Okay. So you guys decide to go to Alistair's forge first. Um, as you guys go through this little, squ like, little town square, uh, you pass a man in some, uh, nice clothes, it seems to be, uh, old officer's clothes, it seems to be a retired, uh, military member, from what you can tell, just off of, a base glance, um, military uniforms are pretty distinctive in this world, um, as you approach Alistair's forge, it's strange. Inside of this small shack here um, seems to be his house, but this large building has this intense glow coming from it. As you approach the door and kind of slide it open, uh, you have to almost shield your eyes. It's so bright in here. And the Vo man kind of looks up and looks over at you guys, and he's got these pair of specialized goggles on. Uh, you'll need specialized eye protection to be in here. Please shut the door. I'll be out with you in a moment. Uh, okay. A um, couple of moments pass, and he walks out, and there's another strange feeling that you had in there, like your body weight doubled almost. Out walks to this. Oh. If you can see that. Ooh. A rather tall, almost lanky man, but he's wiry, I would say. Uh, his white hair is kind of wispy, and he has the mark of the moon on his forehead. His skin's very dark. Um, his eyes are glowing white just a smidge and he looks at you all welcome to my forge i'm alistair how can i help you you know if people really shouldn't go in there without the proper eye protection then you should probably put a sign up well normally they go to the storefront not the forge still then again we don't get too many visitors here Normally it's just those and, well, a few special orders that I take. I don't make equipment for the standard Joe. Uh, that is fair. Uh, in any case, as to the reason we are here, uh, we were hoping you would be able to assist us in the... I am curious, do you know the situation going by... I'm assuming the fort near here is kind of like a general knowledge thing? Yeah, you can see the fort from the town. Yeah. Uh, do you know the situation going on at the fort? Yes, I have heard the rumors. Yeah, well, I can uh, pretty much guarantee you they are more than mere rumors. The Empress right now is being besieged by enemy forces. Curious, isn't it? Uh, indeed? <laughs> I was thinking... Uh, in any case, we were hoping for assistance for these... Uh... I would budge you, Bay, and I'm going to stand in front of him. As my unspoken and eloquent friend was saying, uh, we need help. 
Is that so? And how could a humble smith like myself help you? Building traps. I'm sure you have some. <laughs> Hiding Building traps, traps. If you want traps built, Mekael in town is the man to speak about that, not me. And, well, pray tell what you be. I am a renowned smith. I don't build traps anymore. I don't build anything simple anymore. Anymore, but you can do it. I could, yes, but why would you waste the talent of one of my one such as myself on something like that? Uh Perhaps. Maybe we want your specific talent. And maybe because the Empress might take notice, a general might take notice of your inventions. Of your handiwork. I assure you, the Empress and the Admiral, they know who I am. Then perhaps the case is, is we don't just need a basic trap. But something only your skill could create. Oh? What kind of trap would that be? Uh, you say you are a master smith, correct? Uh, I'm judging, do you imbue your uh, creations with magical properties? I have the ability to, yes. What sort of properties are you capable of imbuing them with? The list that I couldn't do would be far shorter. <laughs> would you be able to, for example... Create a sort of device that, uh, hmm, for, could perhaps, uh, explode upon entry. That is quite simple. Or perhaps one that, given the right stance, would have a ability to create a rather strong... Are magnets a thing in this world, Nano, just before I meta, or say a modern world term? Um... People know what magneticism is, yeah. Okay. Uh, magnetic sort of trap that could, oh, I don't know, perhaps uh, cause a man running in a, a horse that is charging forward to trip due to the magnetic pull to the shoe, iron on its shoe. Yes, that's also fairly simple to do. Look, if you want me to build you a bow that shoots a star from it, I can do that too. Looks over at Halani. <laughs> of course, that will cost you. Yeah, that is a fair thing. Hmm. I am curious. Uh, you apparently have quite the skill with the with forging and with magical abilities. You uh, make me a perception. Uh, perception. And an insight. And yeah, an perception insight. and an insight. Oof. Anybody can do that, by the way. 23 insight. Your <laughs> perception and insight? Yes. I liked how we Probably. flipped Halani. <laughs> yeah. I got pretty crummy for both, but that's okay. Oh, wait, what? Oh, perception. <laughs> well. Okay. Twin is too busy looking at the Alma. But... He, didn't, he didn't feel the light, so currently he's trying to wonder why there's speckles of light inside of his eyes after stepping into that room for a second. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Okay. I'll start with Halani's perception. When he stepped out from his house area, the interior was very nice. Like, the interior mismatches the exterior. The exterior is pretty humble. The interior is pretty fanciful. Um, Heath, with your inside, you can gather, based off of how this guy is talking, um, make me an added history check, Heath. Oh, goody. Not a specialty, but he's not horrible. Oh, okay, damn. You've heard of... And you thought this was a rumor, but there are about five of them in the world. You've heard of these things called 
uh, star forges. And with these special forges, um, people can craft amazing magical equipment. And do you think this guy is probably one of the five star smiths? Oh, damn. So going to ask him for a simple trap would be equivalent to asking a surgeon for, hey, can you check my kid for a cold? <laughs> I get you. Uh, with that in mind, though, Jube would kind of scratch his chin and think on a more grander scale. I see. Uh, would it be wrong to assume that you are, in fact, not just a smith, but one of the great and legendary star smiths? He kind of looks over at you, Jube, and arches a brow a moment and pulls down a little mask, and you see a, a f smile appear on his thin lips. Ah, someone who knows of us, finally. Gives you a amongst your group. He gives you a he gives a very uh, Nipponese bow. In my home, it is an honor to meet some one such as you. Some of our greatest weapons were forged by your like. I apologize for my previous misconception. It is quite all right. Did you ever meet Stormmaster Hatori? Would I have? <laughs> I mean, I'm from the no, temple. Uh, I have not. You, you wouldn't have. I would have heard. I'm assuming I know of him, though. You, you've you heard of him, yeah. yeah but I'm, you never met I have not met him, no. I did not have the honor. Would my master have known about him? <laughs> yeah, he's pretty commonly known. Um, but he's also really hard to find. Most of these star smiths are really hard to find. Yeah. My master did tell me tales of him when I was in the temple. It is a amazing feat to meet one. I have to say, it is stunning. Well, I hope he's doing fine. I haven't heard of heard from him in about half a year now. <laughs> we like to keep in contact. I see. Well, I do know a fact there is a bit of strife back in my home of Nippon, so I hope he is all right as well. The talent such as head could only be of use in these difficult times. Indeed, times are quite strange right now. Can I just take a quick look at Jubei? Where it's like, I thought you wanted me to talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> Jubei Kettle. <laughs> hmm. Sorry, you're going to say something, Judah? Oh, no. Uh, he was just going to say, um, well, there has been no deal met just yet, but I'm sure when the actual time comes to it, that will happen. And he'll actually look over towards the Starsmith and just kind of Regardless, though, thank you for at least considering helping us. This is a bit of a larger mission than at least I have experienced with this group. Any and all of your assistance would be appreciated very much, though. So. I will consider it. He kind of looks over his shoulder to the forge a moment. To be quite honest, I know how these Tharsian individuals like to work. They'll carry out their primary objective, and then they'll go to the areas nearby and do as much damage as they can to them. Why they're here doesn't matter. The more interesting thing about it is, where is the Austerian military in all of this? They have been awfully quiet, haven't they? My honest guest, someone is suppressing them for this purpose. Perhaps one of the ones who think they will become the new emperor or empress if the current one is disposed of. 
I am not particularly too well addressed on the realm of politics, but I do believe that is a possibility. Hmm, perhaps. I know things have been very strifeful since the coup. I would agree. Right. Uh, Regardless, as much as I would love to help, I do apologize. I am in the middle of a commission. I see. Uh, Jimmy will do one thing, though, as he steps forward to tilt his tickets. Perhaps, though, you would be able to take a look at something for me quickly, though. A smith of your talent, I'm sure, would be able to perhaps have an insight. Hmm, perhaps? What is it? Jubei takes out the Dawn of the Blade. The Blade of the Dawn. Blade of Dawn? Yeah, Yeah. Blade of Dawn. He looks it over a moment and even activates it, which kind of surprises you. Hmm. The Blade of Dawn, huh? Interesting. I also take out my shield that I have. <laughs> the, the one that's like super high attack and stuff to see if he is at all interested in it. He'll get to that in a moment. He uh, kind of looks it over almost uh, the, the, the hilt, just admiring it a moment and offers it back to you, Jube. And what exactly is it that you wish to know about this blade? Well, to be honest, I know next to nothing about it. I found it in this country, but it is clearly made from Nipponese origins, and for whatever reason, I am the only one of my companions that is able to use it. Well, I can tell you this much. That blade there was forged by my master's master. It is ancient. Back then, weapons of such power... Well, I should say a little before then, weapons of such power were wielded by special families and bloodlines. That is a relic of a long lost time there. So somewhere within your lineage, this blade belonged to your family. Though we starsmiths um, have a way around such things. The laws of attunement don't apply to us. Chupe kind of looks down at the blade and ah, a little mind blown that apparently his ancestors were some sort of crazy ass people who wielded this legendary blade. <laughs> I will say that a lot of that blade's power has leached out into the world since it was first made. Believe it or not, that thing was much more powerful. Is he kind of looks back up a little shocked? Is there a way to? Reinvigorate it? Hmm, perhaps. I'd have to look at my tomes. If if you wish to make a commission, you may. Jubei will bow. It would be very on, very useful if you could, my friend. Uh, I do not know how much it would cost me, but... We'll get to cost after I do some investigating. Yeah, that would be appreciated. Thank you very much. He then turns his attention to the shield. Quirks a brow. Hmm. Interesting. That shield's even older than the sword. Like... Everyone has, like, the most shot, like, what is this guy? Why is he here? What is going on? You can only guess how popular these guys would be if they were in a big city. (laughs) Does he have any, like, reaction to Cinder? 
No, he he doesn't. Or forges are dime a dozen. <laughs> yeah, no, just because Sand is different. Well, he's a star he's a star forge person, whatever, but he's not indeed a scientist. <laughs> But I, I, I Science beats all. <laughs> yeah, he's I, I a he's a star smith. He's specialized in items of magic and other other things. That was your question. What do you think of it here? Is it is it a nice home for you? Oh, it is quite peaceful. Yes, we star smiths. We tend to get very busy with our commissions. We can't afford to lose too much time to distractions that you might get in the big cities. Much less I would never get any sleep because people would constantly be bugging me. I nudged you, babe. Um... We have a city, actually. Do you be kind of... Oh! Uh, yes, I mean... If you're looking for a place to... pee, uh, not around to, to keep yourself from... Uh, busyness, we do have a, our own place to call home, in fact. Mm -hmm. Yes, and why would I move? Well, for one, you can find yourself to have a steady line of business without being terribly disturbed. Mm -hmm. and I already he... have that here. I would, I would tell him that, uh, I would tell him about the underground. Of our keep thing that's going on. Well, that is true. There's also that. A place filled with mysteries never before seen from this world, from what I've been able to understand. Mm hmm. Hmm. That is fairly interesting, but. Still, I get a lot of commissions. I don't know if I would have much time to go explore this underground facility you speak of. If you... I believe you are self-employed, aren't you? Wouldn't you be able to make time? <laughs> Hold that thought. He steps inside a moment. He comes back outside with a uh, rather thick book. This right here is what is required of me to finish the current commission I am on. I have about 12 more after this to get done by the end of the month. It's quite a workload for one month. Chube is looking to be a smith. I'm not sure if you're willing to take an apprentice at any point. <laughs> is that so? I think he reaches the requirements. Well, what can he make then? Uh, Reverend, uh, well, I have forged a few items, and I will get just literally only thing he's made is his plus one blade at this point. Well, that and. Oh, and so <laughs> Davia's huh? sword? Yes, the Davia's blade, that is true. Though that was a teamwork commission. <laughs> uh, I have crafted a few blades, and I've crafted this one as one of my earlier projects, and he shows his well, plus one katana. And uh, I did enchant it. star looks at this, and Arch is a bra d mm. Just basic item, I realize, though I did craft something a little more unique. Um, if Davia, would you mind sharing? Uh, what is it that you want me to share? No, uh, if you would mind showing him uh, the blade that I forged for you. Squints at the stranger. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll take it out and hand it over with a look in her eyes like, if you break this, I swear to God. <laughs> God. He looks at the craftsmanship, scrutinizes it very closely. Hmm. He 
hands it back to uh, Davia. Well, I'll say this much. It's quite rough around the edges. Uh, I see. Davia bites back saying, fuck <laughs> you. I suppose, given that it is a symbolic piece, that is not incorrect. But regardless, it takes a lot to be a starsmith. Um, if you craft me about 499 more of those blades or something equivalent, then we can talk. I Have see. you ever heard of a spinny chair? A spinny chair. <laughs> I believe it's called a swivel chair. I hate it. I don't believe we've ever established a name for it before, but I suppose a swivel chair could work. Yes, we have a found few it, of them. We found it deep within that high tech. I think it was technomancy anyway. Are you trying to bribe me with this swivel chair? I don't believe bribery is the correct term. I believe it is a persuasive act. And if it's working, then yes. <laughs> I suppose. Yes, it is a chair that, while it is able to spin on all axes, does not seem to experience a force of what I believe is called torque. It can move around. The man oh, forges yeah. weapons of gods, but swivel chair <laughs> technology is goddamn impressive. <laughs> That's what we're trying to convince him on. You can just transmutate to several different angles. Mm-hmm. I see. As interesting as that is, it would take more than a chair to switch. Well, that's what I'm saying. Even with something as simple as a chair, they use the utmost of their technology for the means of something so simple. Imagine what greater things may exist outside of that realm. I don't think a chair that swivels is the utmost of technology. <laughs> I want to just grab Cinder's <laughs> hand and just kind of push her up to him. What, are you Hello. offering her in marriage now? <laughs> <laughs> no, just look at her. She's cool, right? I suppose I for a Warforged. But I suppose. This is getting very weird now. <laughs> I agree. I, I have to admit, it is getting a little odd, Evren, at the moment. Anyways, <laughs> Master Forge, I do appreciate your time, of course, and I would like to say, if you do find yourself in need of a place of change, perhaps spending a holiday up with us would be appreciated, even. But as for the Blade of the Dawn, I would very much appreciate you looking into that. Yes, I'll have to take time to look into it. There's one thing you all forget to think of about moving. A Star Forge is not an easy thing to move. It is not your standard forge. I uh, did not think. In fact, I was not uh, originally intending for you to move in with us, he says, as he kind of looks over at Everett with, Really? You're calling me a Master Forge next to the fucking god of forging? I'm a rookie. <laughs> it's called getting gassed up by your friends. Come on now. <laughs> <sighs> it's, just, it's like saying you he looked at Jubei's sword and was like I remember my first sword <laughs> I remember my baby first blade baby's first blade <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jubei kind of looks over and is like in, in any case uh, that would be appreciated and of course uh, we don't expect you to necessarily move into the castle with us if things uh, do change though and you need a place to stay you are welcome one more thing. I'm going to just, like, take Jubei by the ear and just, like, lead him out a little bit so the Starforger can't hear us. <clears throat> Why don't we explain our situation to him? Maybe he might be willing to help us. Which you know, situation? World ending? You know, the world ending? You know, this guy trying to, like, kill Demiga? I think we should tell him. I see. Uh, he we looks... can get him on our side, or at least have him do a few commissions for us. Well, I think he was willing to do the commissions already, Evren. I know, but I want him to come, like, be with us, because that'd be really cool to have him. 
Everett, as he said himself, moving the Star Forge would be a monumental task. I It'll don't... be fine. He got it here anyways. I'm sure he can move it. With help. He has us. <sighs> it will not hurt to <laughs> tell him of the situation, Everett, but uh, I think for the time being, we may have to just travel here. Of course, if he wishes to move in with us, that is more than appreciated, but... I mean... I, I, will, I will tell him what's going on, and if, if that changes his mind, it does. If it does, then I want to be sad, but I'm not going to push it anymore, okay? Okay, Evelyn, that is fine. Okay. And next time, stop talking so much, because you're, you're... I don't know. I just... You're smart, too, and I, like... I want to try doing it first, okay? I want to uh, try convincing him. Very well, Evelyn. Uh, feel free. <laughs> Scratches the back of his head. <laughs> All right, all right, I, I, I go back. <laughs> and I explain to him the situation at hand. By all means, explain it. <laughs> no, why do we have to do it? Uh. You want to talk more? Here's your chance. No, no, I want, I want to do the TLDR. <laughs> the way you explain it might be different than how I'm thinking it would be explained. So I'm oh gonna my God. Okay, so... We're going through a lot of stuff right now, and uh, it's kind of world-ending, and I don't know if, uh... <sighs> I'm used to the basics, okay? So, start off with, I'm a demigod, hi, yeah, i probably not talking to you at this point. Uh, <laughs> he tells everyone I'm a demigod, yeah. Um, that's, that's the main one. Second main thing is that there's a group of Chaos Bringers, or whatever their name is, uh, that kind of wants to... Uh, kill all the demigods, and there's this one knight that wants to kind of absorb their souls and become stronger. And uh, let's just say, even the gods are not okay with him doing stuff like that because you know God interfered on our behalf, and you know we're kind of cool, but not really. And uh, um, we have this giant arch demon that's trying to kill Jubei over here. He's not really nice. Uh, <laughs> so. Pretty much, they're just trying to end the world, and we're ha we have to stop them because you know, no one else is really knowing about them. But we're, they're kind of done with us at this point. But we're trying our best, okay? And it's really hard for me to explain because this is a lot to go off of. But this is pretty much the the main points: is that world ending people, they're not really that nice. Giant black knight tried to murder me twice. Satsuna came and saved me, and that was kind of scary. Um, they have weird, weird Elgic monster horror whatever things trying to, you know, do bad stuff. They're making, like, a weird immortal army. So, I don't think that's good either. They also have an archdemon on their side, which is not good. So, archdevil thing, whatever. And yeah, he's absorbing gonna... the demigod souls. They're powerful. Yeah. I'm gonna post a gif of what this guy's face is because I have no way to describe it. <laughs> other than that. <laughs> His eyes just kind of glaze over halfway through that. Huh. <clears> hmm. <throat> Yes, that sounds like quite the predicament. It's also the fourth world-ending event I've heard of in the last year. Who do you think these you. commissions are for? I don't know. You have never told us. <clears throat> People just like you, adventurers, looking to save the world. That's great. I enjoy those kinds of commissions. But, unfortunately, I hate to tell you, you are not special in having such a mission. I believe no one ever said that we were. <laughs> in any case, uh, I do apologize. Uh, you are correct. You are a busy man as well. And we just wanted to make sure you knew all the things that were going on. But of course, if you would be willing to take commissions from us in the future... I believe that would be very appreciated. Yes, by all means, I am happy to take a commission. 
Again, I thank you. Well, if that is it, I have a staff to finish. Oh, of course. <laughs> That's Evan right now. She is she is mad at this guy now. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I figured. Uh Jimmy goes uh, he's, Oh, speaking of staffs, uh, I don't mm -hmm. suppose you are any good at repairing uh, damaged magical items quickly as well. No, no, he's not, not touching he my staff. Not left with Victor anyway. No, I guess we did leave that open with Victor. Yeah, he's not yeah, touching my staff. About it. There's no way. He, I don't like him. He's being to me. <laughs> uh, in any case, Evren, I think it is time we head back to the other smith and we thank you for your time, my friend. And, uh... Yes, you're quite welcome. Uh, and how would it be best to get in contact with you after uh, you have found out something more of the blade? Mm, I should know more about it within the next couple of days. Very good. I would be sure to I'm drop sure by. you'll be here at least that long. I am certain as well. I will be sure to drop by before we leave then. I thank you very much. You know, or we'll all be dead. That is a completely viable option as well. Your confidence uh, overwhelms me, Helani. <laughs> <laughs> she just gives you like a snarky look. <laughs> In any case, we should head over to the other Swiss. Again, we appreciate the time. You're very welcome. May Yadar watch you all. Who? Yadar. Is that a god? Orging yep. guy, okay. I imagine? No, he's not the god of four. Everyone just starts sparking as she she walks away, probably like, accidentally like zapping the floor or like something metal near her. <laughs> mm. I don't He's pompous, he's arrogant, and I... Mm. <laughs> yeah, the rather talented ones tend to be more that way, uh, Evren. Yadar is the, uh, well, I guess he is a forge god. He's the god of, uh, his domains are magic, forge, and time. Yeah, well, there you Jube, go. Jube, yeah. Jubei, you're gonna be better than him, okay? I don't wanna make sure that happens until I die. If it Evren. makes you feel better, Evren. I did not like him very much, either. <laughs> Jupe just thinks he kind of reminds him like half the his mentors in the temple. <laughs> Jupe, you're going to beat him down and make him look pathetic, okay? And I'm going to laugh years later, because this is going to happen. Evren, and I will gloat. Evren, I am not trying to become like a... You would... <laughs> it sounds like you will. <laughs> Wanting to achieve that yourself, but you would rather experience it vicariously rather than directly. No, I know I can't be a smith. I can't do that. You you also know that Vo lived for fifteen hundred years, and Jubei is a human. <laughs> well, Jubei could always become a level twenty druid and then outlive him anyway. <laughs> well, technically, Victor could make Jubei immortal. All he needs is enough diamonds. <laughs> See, easy. Is that how that works? Hmm? Is that how that works? It's the clone spell. Because mm. you can just put the soul into a younger body, so it can kind of rinse and repeat. That doesn't. That doesn't not change it. It's a specific part of the spell. Is that unfortunately, while you're able to give yourself a younger body, your 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 life expectancy does not change. Oh, I didn't know. I never read that in the spell. Hm. Go 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 yeah. figure. Become a lich. <laughs> I'm sure there are many different ways that it could be done. Just ascend to godhood, Jubei. That's all you need to do. Or at least I could have sworn Let me say. Maybe in your standard 5e setting. I might be thinking of a different spell. That's why I'm checking. Yeah. Alright, so you guys are going to head to the other spell? Yeah, there's nothing in there about that, Nana. Or, uh... Anyway, so yeah, yeah we'll head over to the yeah, other spell. Okay, yeah. Smith. So you guys see this 
It's, <laughs> is his name Bubba Joe? <laughs> it's it's Mikael. 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 Mikael is short for it's Bubba Joe. <laughs> just a cut. You just hear the ting, 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 ting as he's making a horseshoe. It's like you went from... Well, you literally went from, like, the god of foraging to, like, a level one smith. Yeah, exactly. Uh, hello, my friend. Ah, uh, hello. Uh, I see you. I'm gonna help you. Uh, we were hoping, uh, to have, to get your assistance with the problem with the, uh, the, the fort up ahead with the Empress, uh, are you capable of forging traps and such? Yeah, depends on what kind. Uh, many various sorts, I suppose. Uh, I can pretty much tell from a glance this fucker cannot imbue magical traps like we were talking about with our star forge smith, obviously. <laughs> no, he can't. Yeah, I figured. Damn, Juve, don't profile. <laughs> Actually, he's the star smith. Yeah. Not Alistair. It was a big. It was a big flip. This is just a test. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he looks at. He's like, I suppose uh, basic traps such as bear traps, uh, spikes for pit traps, callop traps for horses, and such as things as that. Ah, yeah, I can make those. Oh, that would be appreciated. Uh, we are hoping to help save the Empress. And she, she heard. No, really. Uh, nudges and Everin. Odyssey <laughs> invokes. Uh, indeed. He spits on the ground. Damn, Darcyans. Looks over at Everin with a smile. You said you wanted to be the one to talk, Everin. <laughs> she seems to have frozen in fear. <laughs> oh, jeez, yeah. Oh, she went. I didn't even notice her leave. Uh, yeah, she had in any case, we will uh, need your assistance for this. Uh, how long would it take you to... Uh, how many of these items do you have, and how long do you think it would take you to forge such uh, extras? Hmm. Well, how fast do you need them? Well, it would be appreciated. I guess this is something we ha we're probably going to take. You know, Jube swipes the sending stone from Everin and goes, uh, Isn't. Yes. Uh, what time do you think would be a good time for opportunity for. Have you spoken to the Empress and the others yet? I spoke with Everin's father. I've not been able to see the Empress yet. Very good. Uh, do you have an idea what the situation in there is? Mm, not great. They're running out of food. How many men do they have at their ready? Twenty. I see. Uh, well trained and armed? Mm, they're trained. I wouldn't call them... I wouldn't call them special forces or anything, but they're trained enough. And they're armed moderately. How much day longer do you think their food will last? Likely a week. By then they would already be assaulting the castle, I guess. How long do you think they would be able to hold out in the situation you are in? No more than two days. We best we move it in one and a half. We do not wish to push this. Uh, turns back to the smith. Would you be able? How much would you be able to make in a day if I assisted you? Hmm. You any good? I am competent. How fast are you with that hammer? I don't know what's a check for that, Nano. Ah, <laughs> uh, con. Just a constitution flat? Yeah, just do a con check. Sure. He'll bless himself as he does it. <laughs> okay. 22 plus... 24. Okay, yeah. 
um, you're able to utilize the hammer at a good pace, and it's not very tiring for you, so that's good. Hmm. I suppose we can get about 12 bear traps done. Uh, in that case, that will be useful. We will begin working on them. Uh, Jibe turns to the other party members. I suppose I will be stuck here helping uh, in the forge to get as much as we can done as quickly as possible. Is there any assistance I may be able to provide? We will still need to rally the people of the village, hopefully get them together for uh, digging pits and other items out in the forest. Also, if we can uh, get the sharpened stakes in the ground as well, that would be useful if a cavalry charge occurs. Mm -hmm. Oh. Um, I repeat that last part. I did not quite hear that. Oh, uh, basically, we need sharp. We need sharp stakes for cavalry charge, count, counting cavalry charges. Basically, got uh, you know, movable barricade. Well, um, I would not say I'm particularly good at the uh, at such a mix, but if told what to do, I'm sure that I can figure it out. They are very simple, my friend. Uh, basically, you just take a wood and take a knife until it gets pointy. Horses, uh, momentum tends to take care of the rest of the problem. Well, I, all right. I'm sure if we can gather the villagers to assist, we should have plenty ready for tomorrow. Oh, that is good. And we are going to need to make sure that everyone in the village is aboard with this plan. As which, many as we from can, what I yes. Understand, all right. He kind of looks a little bit uncertain. Um, but overall, um, he, he seems confident, maybe not in himself, but maybe in Jubei. Hmm? I didn't catch that. What did you say exactly? He's not necessarily confident in himself, but he's confident in what Jubei had said. Okay. I'm certain you will be fine. If we get prepared, we will, as I said, with tactics and surprise at our side, we should be able to turn the tides of this fight. Hmm. Well, if you are sure, um... He... I don't know, yeah, he, he, a little bit of a difficult expression kind of appears on his face, but other than that, um, well, nah, he's still wearing that mask, but, um, he does kind of take it off for, like, just a quick moment, um, even, and just, I don't know, I just, it's, every once in a while I will get an odd feeling, not necessarily a premonition of any sort. But it's oftentimes like these that it, mm, I don't know. I suppose I will provide more insight when it becomes more than just a sensation, but I do feel a bit wary concerning this plan. I just hope everything goes well. Uh, to be frank, I wish I could come up with a better one, but given the time frame we have... I cannot think of anything other, other, anything else to try. No, that is fair. There is a reason why you are the leader of our group. You do make good plans. It's just... I fear that there may be more variables than what we already know. You are probably correct. As we said, we uh, there is quite possibly a creature out there that is dangerous beyond the soldiers. If there is, it will be up to us to handle it. I am positive that we will be able to handle any soldiers, if anything. But anything else, whatever it may be, um, well, I'm not sure, but... And he kind of actually brings up a hand to his face and just kind of... Rubs a little bit at his face um, before kind of smiling a little bit lightly. If anything, a little bit tired, um, likely from last night before. I suppose optimism is in order. 
It is our best bet at the moment. As I said, see what you can find with the other people while I work this the forge. If they can get other traps up and running, uh, hopefully, this uh, this uh, if there's a Fletcher or something in town, if the people know how to use bows, that would be best. As I said, I will take care of the front line as much as possible in this situation. Well, just now. Oh. He kind of, like, takes a moment, and... Frankly, I'd say, like, ever since what had happened earlier that day, um, he's been acting just a tiny bit weird, but... Um, he kind of just, after a bit of pause, he just kind of says, Well, just, um... Just know that... In that event, I will be there from the behind you, and I will be able to help as much as I can. I thank you, Twin. I will rely on you. He... He puts up a smile, but it does not quite reach his eyes. Jubei kind of looks at him and kind of Twin, is this something concerning you? Um, how long do you think you will be here with this, um, smith? Turn to the smith. How long do you think you can afford to work before we have to stop? Mm, well... It's only midday. We can go till 11 o'clock at night. Turns over to Twin. I will be finished here then with him at 11 o'clock at night then. But uh, smithing is a more physical than mental job, Twin. If you need to speak with me, uh, I suppose you can do so when I work. Um, no, it is okay. I would hate to trouble you at this moment. Looks at <laughs> you and bro Well, to be honest, with that statement alone, Twin, you are troubling me. I would rather you tell me than not. If I can at least assure you of anything, it is not anything big enough to cause a problem within this mission of ours. Yeah, I kind of looks. I know that you have a tendency to worry, but I promise I am not holding anything that is particularly important. Jubei looks at Twin. Very well then. And he goes up to him. We will speak at 11 o'clock then. With a smile. He gives back a, another smile. It doesn't quite reach his eyes, but you could tell it's a bit more genuine than the last. Then tell them, my friend. Uh, do your best to help everyone. As I said, I'm going to have to leave it to you and Evren, you and the others for the time being while I work in here. I will make sure of it. Okay. And Jubei's out of the scene because he will be making bear traps for the next fucking, like, 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Alright. Who do you guys want to go to next? What else do we go to again? Well, we still need to rally the people and... May find any like Felch Fletchers or things for air people for you know, get the people together and weapons for the people. Right. You can pick any of these NPCs and talk to them. They all do different things. Well, I suppose so getting gaining and getting and gaining support is probably the next necessary step. Um, so in that case, Valm second. Hmm. Well, actually, I guess in this particular case, because I see that of which you have placed out, but, um... I guess, uh, attempting Powell first. Really, I'm just looking for any larger, um... Well, not even larger group of civilians, just, like, smaller groups and whatnot. Individual. Powell? Powell, yeah. Okay. Uh, you walk up to Powell. That's how he looks. 
he seems to be uh, doing some wood whittling, just chilling in this uh, like rocking chair, whittling a little wooden figurine, and he's got a little pipe in. He doesn't seem to pay you much mind as you approach. I feel like with who Quentin is as a person, um, for a moment he finds himself just standing there and almost like kind of staring behind his mask before he kind of remembers that he has to approach people and therefore will do such um, with a slight hello after maybe five minutes of just standing there. <laughs> Ominously. <laughs> Good day to you. To be quite honest, you are starting to creep me out. Oh, I apologize if I had that effect. Um, I suppose in this case I should explain to you as to why I am here. Um, That'd be a good start. Well, you see, I, alongside my group, my party, so to speak, um, are a team of adventurers that have come across some rather harrowing news concerning this particular um, village? Well, I'd call it a town. Town, yeah. In this particular town. Yeah? Yes. What's that? Well, in particular, it seems as though some particularly malicious forces have begun to stir a bit out inside of their own camp. We fear that with who we may be dealing with and, well, their sheer numbers, which seem to be growing from what I could tell, this town may not be safe soon. And what are you proposing? Well, he kind of looks down at the wood that he has been carving and he kind of points toward if I may ask and diverge a little um, what is it that you do is that a hobby or is it an extension of a skill oh this this is a hobby what do you do around here if I may ask I'm a hunter well in particular, with what I had been mentioning, is that my group and I would like to, in a sorts, rally up the people in the means to protect this town. Unfortunately, the, yeah, the, me failing how to count, we have about one, two, three, four, five, and then we're missing one person, so, yeah. These six of us are unfortunately not enough to stop forces of 200. We would need the help of the town. And, yes. Hmm, I see. And so you think one extra hunter is going to make all the difference? I do not mean to offend, but in most situations, even with one hunter, one hundred or so, becomes a very formidable force. I am asking you, yes, as a start, but I plan on asking the others. If you do think you could, please tell others and spread the word of what I had told you. I... He kind of takes a moment to take off his mask, and other than tired eyes, he kind of has a rather companionable smile, and he just... I'm doing my part to make sure that this town and the life within it is protected. By spreading the word, you would be doing the same. Make me, uh, persuade. Oh, I'm good at that. <laughs> Do you have guidance? No, I fucking don't. 
What kind of cleric doesn't get guidance? <laughs> Quentin doesn't. The Chad kind? Exactly. <laughs> Chad cleric doesn't need an extra D4. Thanks, Nano. Let's see. Ah, yes. My one in persuasion. <laughs> Oh, oh! Nice. Like I said, Chad Cleric don't need no D4. Yeah, he. <laughs> I'm going to regret that later. <laughs> he uh, stops whittling the little wooden bear statue that he's making. All right, I suppose. Besides those... Dossian fools have scared all the animals away. They ain't got nothing to hunt. <laughs> Quentin opens his mouth to say something, but he kind of remembers the past responses to his um grave-like charm, and he closes his mouth and just does a companionable nod. <laughs> By all means, I heavily appreciate your, um... I'm not sure if compliance is the right word. It's one of them. Your cooperation. Cooperation. <clears throat> assistance. Your assistance. Your assistance is greatly appreciated. Yes, well... For home and country, right? Correct. No life is too small. No number too little. Well, I'll leave you to it. Just let me know when. Of course. Currently, um, our collective leader is off with another part of this mission of ours, but I will let you know when finding the time. Can I often find you in this place? I have no ass to be. And he kind of, a little bit of a bright smile kind of appears on his face and he just nods. Well, with that being said, I can at least assure you that I will be back either later tonight or tomorrow in the morning. Very well. You have yourself a good day. You too. Mm. You will continue. And with that, really quick, Storm. Mm. You still running yours tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll end it there then. Righty. Sounds good.